made it all happen for the military wives. Choir master Gareth Malone believes singing can change the toughest of lives. I know that music can bring people together under really extraordinary circumstances. In February 2011, he became choir master at a military base in Devon. His mission was to create a choir from the hundreds of women that live on the base. I am here to lift your spirits, hopefully, pick you up, to bring your voices together. Gareth took his choir from obscurity... I want to run away, I just want to run away. <laughs> ..right to the heart of the nation's tribute to the troops. This is it! <laughs> but this proved to be just the start of things to come. I was convinced that that was it, that was the end. And actually, that turned out to be the beginning. As the nation took the military wives' choir to their hearts. Please welcome Gareth Malone... ..and the military wives! <laughs> we sit there on a Saturday night watching these programmes. We never, ever, ever thought in our wildest dreams we would be on them. For your Christmas number one, the military wives. ..and took them to places they could never have imagined. Follow me. I think it's just like any minute now I'm going to wake up and be back to normal, having my normal life again. In the space of 12 months, we've done things that most people would never do in their lifetimes. Long may they continue to sing. There are now 75 military wives' choirs across the country and even abroad. He gave us a voice in more ways than one. This was Gareth's dream and it's, it's, it's came true and not many people can say their dreams have come true in their life. Last year, Gareth Malone started a choir for military wives at the Royal Marine Barracks in Chivener, North Devon. Today, two of its members, Catherine and Nikki, are in Salisbury to support a new military wives choir. Actually, I'm, I'm actually quite excited. Oh, yeah, look at the moon, the Christmas tree. <laughs> Inspired by the experience of Chivener, the Salisbury Plain Choir started in January. They're ready to go. This evening, 30 of its members will be performing at the opening of the Christmas market. Ah, how many of you? There's loads. <laughs> We've never actually listened to a choir saying. We've always been there. This is really nice. We sing in bleak midwinter. Oh, I've got the chills. Oh, I've got the chills. <laughs> Gareth first went to Chivener to set up a choir in February 2011. I know nothing about the military. I've never spent time on a military base. I know very little about military life. I really don't know what to expect. For the following eight months, Gareth's mission was to become the base's choir master. Your name is? Gareth Malone. I think this is the most intimidating place I've ever been in my life. Do you get used to it? Yeah, you do, yeah. Coming to a military base for the first time was like, it might, I might as well have gone to the moon. It was so alien. It was incredibly intimidating. The base at Chivener trains nearly 1,200 men from the Royal Marines, Army and RAF. In three weeks, these men were to be deployed to Afghanistan, leaving behind more than 120 women and their children. 
Family Day at the base is a chance for families to get together before deployment. It seemed a good place to start recruiting for Gareth's new choir. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Gareth Malone. We met Gareth that day and we thought, um, who is this guy? I want to invite anyone to come and join a choir. Who is this 12-year-old that's coming to teach us to sing? <laughs> you don't need to be a brilliant singer, but I'm around. Come and speak to me if you're at all interested, if you've ever, ever thought about singing, if you sing in the shower. Um, it's about bringing everyone together. Tumbleweed. Obviously, we, we're used to military men that are, are quite strong and powerful and big and assertive, and Gareth wasn't any of those. I'm starting a choir. You're good luck with that one. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Have you heard that I'm here to start a choir? Yes. Word travels fast. Yeah. Uh, are you interested? Yes. Yeah. Good. Yes is. Hello. Hello, George. George. Hello, George. Hello. Hello, Nicola. Hello. Do you sing? Do I sing? What does she sing? Everything. I personally thought, yeah, he will have his work cut out. These are women that haven't got time to do this, you know? We've just been told, get on with it. Keen to spread the word about the choir's first rehearsal, Gareth hit The Patch, the married quarters made up of 280 houses. The geography of the place is so insular, it just made me realise how much these women are on top of each other and cut off from the rest of society. Hello. Hello. Stacy. Stacy. Hi, Stacy. Hello. Hi, I'm Gareth, Hello. the local choir master. Hello. <laughs> so, what, what what is there to do for you while you, while your husbands are away? Nothing whatsoever. Just the long counting the long days. Yeah. I'm starting a choir. My dream is to be able to sing. Your dream. <laughs> I'm going to make that dream come true. Thank you. I hope, he said. I, hope. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I used to be in the choir. Oh, great. <laughs> when? Uh, when I was, like, from 12 to 17. Was nice to meet you. Would you like to... Can I hear your voice? No. OK, that's mean, isn't it? After months of training and preparation, around 600 men said goodbye to their families to begin their six-month tour of duty in Afghanistan. It was the fifth time Nicky Scott's husband, George, had been deployed. We've done it before, but it's always different. All the feelings, because the children are older and... and they know what's going they on. They know what's going on, yeah. But you have to get on with it. We've, cho we've chosen this lifestyle, so... And, um, and that's how it is. My stomach's churning. How many hours have we got? Um, three. Three hours to go. Three hours to go. It's up a lake. Yeah. Major Williams. <laughs> cool Thompson. It's up a Maitland. The build-up to going, and um, it's just, it's just horrendous to be honest with you. When the men first deployed, it was such a strange atmosphere. It was bleak, yet at the same time, they were sort of ready to go. So there was a sort of sense of relief. But you could tell that families had been absolutely torn apart by this. It was an atmosphere like I've never felt anywhere else. When he says goodbye to me, is that going to be his last goodbye? Oh, oh sorry. Having spent time drumming up interest, the day arrived for the first rehearsal of Gareth's Military Wives Choir. Their base was the chapel on the edge of the barracks. It was so sensitive. The husbands had just gone. I wondered if it was going to be the right time to start a choir. You know, I thought it could help, but I didn't know whether people would yet be prepared to start getting up and singing. It somehow didn't seem right. I'm just going to guess you're here for the choir and not going to the military base. <laughs> you're here for the choir, brilliant. Thanks for coming, Susie. Who's this? This is Jack. Hi, Jack. Hello. 
I take it you're here for the choir. Choir, yeah. um, go on in. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Really, really good to see so many of you here. So I'm just going to do a head count. One, two, three, four, five, six. Gareth's seven, first eight, rehearsal nine, attracted nine, wives nine, from nine, across nine, the ranks, nine, from nine, private nine, soldiers nine, right up to the commanding nine, officer's nine, wife. Forty. I feel it's really good. Forty-one. Hello. Brilliant. I am here to lift your spirits, hopefully, pick you up, and actually, the most important thing, to, to get, have an opportunity to bring your voices together to be heard. The first song that we're going to sing is Guns N' Roses, well-known choral classic, Sweet Child of Mine. I was very keen not to come in with some dreadful tearjerker or a big piece of choral music. I wanted to do something that would be fun, upbeat, and that they would know. He, he won people over that day with that song. He, he really did. Singing that came at the right time because everyone was very low. I'm assuming you just know it, so give it a go. Now, if we can do that together, then we will have a choir. <laughs> When I came here, I thought I was going to meet tough birds who were going to show me what's what. And actually, I found a, a group of really timid women whose husbands had just gone away and who were just kind of really emotionally vulnerable. And that really took me by surprise. And you could hear it in their singing. It was so tentative. That was quite stressful. Didn't enjoy that. So I'm a bit all flustered. I need a drink. <laughs> With the women lacking confidence, Gareth wanted to speak to some of them individually. Hi, Sam. How are you? One of them was Sam Stevenson, who had sung in choirs before. I thought it'd be nice to have a little listen to you singing. How does that sound? Like lots of fun? No. No, come on, <laughs> let's give it a go. Oh, Good. That first session with Sam in her house was painful. She must have said sorry about 150 times, and it went on and on and on. Oh, sorry. And I've never seen anyone be kind of so timid about singing. Who has that much talent? Sorry. Sorry for, sorry for saying sorry. <laughs> Obviously, back then, my confidence was... It was zilch, and there was nothing there. I got to the park. Sam's husband, John, is in the Royal Engineers, and at 27, he just started his first tour of duty to Afghanistan. It's a mixture of emotions. Like, you feel guilt because you think, God, have I forced you into the army to give us a better life? And then you're angry that they're going. Like, you know, everything just feels so tense. With her husband deployed, Sam was left in charge of looking after their two young children. Brody has autistic spectrum disorder. He's, he's not developed at his age. He's, he's seven, but he's more at a sort of four-year-old level. Yeah, life, life can be difficult, because obviously Brody's behaviours can be really challenging at times, and... But I wouldn't change it, though. I'm really up for the choir. I love singing, and... I think my husband will have a bit more peace of mind that, you know, I'm going to be occupied and kept busy, so then I think if you're kept busy, the time will hopefully go quicker as well. So, yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. <laughs> Over the next month, the choir met for rehearsals three times a week. OK, that's not really, that's not really selling it to me. She's got... I want the eyes up. I always say to people, sing before you're singing. She's got a smart... Yeah? Let's have the introduction. Right, you've got to look alive. And if you're not singing at the beginning, you've got to look like you might. Yeah? People are like this. What's going to happen? Who's going to sing? You are. She's got a smile and it seems to me reminds me of Once they started to come on, they started to stand up, they started to rely on each other. I think they were just getting to know each other and that was wonderful. And it made me think they need to do a performance, they need to get out there because that's, that's how you learn. As the choir progressed, Gareth began to think of an audience to perform to. Five minutes away is the busy market town of Barnstable. Excuse me, can I ask you a quick question? Do, uh, do you know anything about R&B Chivener? It's down there. Yes, perfect. Right. Do you know nothing else? No. 
No, no, nothing. No. No. It was just astonishing. Nobody knew anything about them. And nobody knew anything about them nationally. We just didn't talk about them. And it really felt absolutely correct to take these women out of the patch where they live and take them to the local town and show them off. You are going to perform at the Pannier Market. <laughs> yes! It'll be absolutely awesome, won't it? Yes. Now, the, here's the rub. It's in two weeks. <laughs> Who'd like to have a go at solo? <coughs> no? No. <laughs> no? Sam? No. No? no? Definitely not? No. I was just so scared of criticism, rejection, and I just wouldn't have been able to do it at all. When the rain is blowing in your face What I love about Nikki is you can tell that there's real strength there. She's been in the military, she's, she's a fearless woman, and yet there's this incredible softness and tenderness when she sings that is just so beguiling. Beautiful singer. Uh, I'd like you to do the solo. Oh, my goodness. When I knew I was going to do it, it rekindled a confidence in me that I didn't think I still had. With days to go until the Barnstable performance, the women took every opportunity to rehearse. The thing I like most is just the camaraderie between all the women. We feel like sisters now, just helping each other out. I think we're so keen to do it that we will really try our best. We are standing together as a group of girls going, actually, I'll be there for you and you'll be there for me and we'll all get through this together. Nobody had any idea that there would be something like 600 people in the Pannier Market. When I arrived that morning, I was absolutely horrified by the scale of it. I just imagined, I don't know, 50 people. And we were swamped. There were so many people there. When the rain is falling in your face And the whole world is on your case takes such guts to show your emotion in public and that's what Nikki did that's what Nikki did in front of all those people at the Barnstable Pannier Market she made you feel what it was to be a military wife that's a that's a difficult thing to do that day was like look at us we're a team, and, that, and it stuck, you know? It really did stick, that. I was stunned that the, the local people wanted to come out and, and see the military wives from Chivna. It wasn't just that people were saying, yeah, well done, and you sang well. It was that people really connected with who these women were and that they applauded their efforts and that they were supporting them. And that was the first hint that we had that people would really love this. With the first performance of the Chivana Choir such a success, Gareth began to think bigger. 
this is something that could easily spread to other bases. It's gone so well here and in a really short space of time, the women are singing well and getting so much out of it. I would like this to go further. I want to go to other bases. Gareth decided to take the choir to Britain's largest naval base in Plymouth. But as the day approached, terrible news came through that a Royal Marine from 4-2 Commando, based at Plymouth, had been killed by a bomb in southern Afghanistan. Uncertain if it was the right time to visit Plymouth, Gareth called a meeting. This is not a position I've ever been in before, so this is very new territory for me. And I would love to go to Plymouth. It's an accident of timing that, that everything happened this weekend. Music can't so solve the problem, but I kind of have a hunch that it might be something really beneficial. I'd like to know what you think about it, really. Susie. At the moment, they need all the support they can get. They need something to focus on. You know, I'd be lost without it. This is my distraction. It keeps me going, in a way. And they're having a pretty rough time. And I can't describe to you how hard it is. Um, it's heartbreaking. We went down to Plymouth at a time that was very difficult and there had been fatalities and we were very sensitive about it. But somehow having these women, these military wives, to say, it, we understand the situation but we still think that singing can be important for you, it made it OK. It's really, really good to see so many of you here tonight. We're, we're all very, very aware that we come at quite a sensitive time. And so we just wanted to acknowledge that and we're, we're really aware of that. We've come with some fun and just to share, share our voices, share our singing with you and hopefully inspire you and give you something to focus on during what I know is a very, very difficult time. I don't know what it is that makes me love you so. When Gareth came down to us, it was a really difficult time then and we just basically felt lost. We didn't know what to do we didn't know where to go but we needed somebody to keep us together basically and he did that job over the weeks gareth and his two new choirs rehearsed in preparation for their first performance together singing at plymouth's annual armed forces day The first time we sang um, at Armed Forces Day on Plymouth Hoe, the majority of us were all holding hands. It was like three in a row, and we were all holding hands. All of us shaking like leaves, thinking, oh my God, what are we doing? <laughs> People did come up to us in the end and said, you were fantastic. And that, to hear recognition and all our hard work, it had come about, it was lovely. It was it's such a feeling. Even the children were, you know, you, you were fantastic. We're like, brilliant. <laughs> feeling I can't explain it it's just but it's so nice like all of us came together it was awesome it's combined us all together we feel like one big team now and it's just it's just a really good feeling so yeah bring on the next one <laughs> You've got all these women able to sing really well. It's so potent, it just makes me think, bigger, do more, more of this. You know, it's really, really strong. For the Chivna wives, there were two more months before their husbands returned home. Good, well done. Simple. It's really moving to hear how far they've come for me because they're investing so much energy in this and there's emotion in their singing now. Well done, absolutely astonishing. It's, it's a very emotional time for them because we can see the end, but there's still a long way to go. You're so frustrated because you want them to be home now and it's like, you know, that last bit of your pregnancy where you're just miserable and you want the baby to come and that's what it's like. Oh, I, don't, I don't even know what I'm going to say to him. Just... 
probably just how much I love him. Tired now, but we need daddy now. <laughs> the girls, they've done really well. They have. We've had our moments, you know, we, like every family going through this. It's the uncertainty. It's so hard to go through this kind of thing when you have no control over a situation. You can't relax until they're on that plane, till you know they've left that country. To help the women get through this time, Gareth wanted them to have something special to look forward to. You need to keep Saturday the 12th of November free because you are going... I mean, it gives me a huge excitement to tell you. We're going to perform at the Festival of Remembrance, um, which is at the Royal Albert Hall. More than that, it's live on BBC One. More than that... Take that, come on! <laughs> it's not take that, no, no. It's in front of the royal family. We whooped and then broke down in tears because it's something so personal. Couldn't believe a building so iconic, so fabulous, and they were going to let us actually go and sing in there. This is as big as it gets. I want this to be the best thing you've ever done in your lives. I want it to be a very, very proud moment. I've heard myself saying this is the biggest thing I've ever done so many times, but this is the biggest thing I've ever done in my life. This is absolutely huge because it's of national importance and national significance. Nothing else I've done has felt like that. In terms of getting their message across and getting them understood, it's, I can't think of anything better. For the performance at the Royal Albert Hall, Gareth wanted to have something specially composed. Hello, Paul. Hi. He visited Paul Miller, who'd written the main piece for the royal wedding. I mean, the reason I contacted you was because I could not find the right piece. So it's trying to find that line between something that is moving and, and does speak and is about remembrance, but it's also about celebration, I think. I knew that Paul could write music for them, but I wanted something about it to be from them, from their hearts. And so going to their letters seemed like the obvious choice. For the lyrics, Gareth had asked the women to provide lines from personal letters. I'll be old-fashioned now, but, you know, I'll put, same as the perfume, I'll put perfume on all my letters and all the parcels, and I'll always put lipstick on and actually kiss the back. I miss you today, tomorrow and always. I miss you with each passing second, and I count every single one, knowing that as each one passes me by, it brings me another second closer to you. I love you more. Any, any others? I don't want to read mine out. Can't read it out. Keep my heart safe, my love, for I send it away with you. Hold it close, and now I'm with you always. Thank you very much. <laughs> there are no goodbyes for us. Wherever you are, you're always in my heart. It's on my bracelet that my husband got for my birthday. Yeah, that's lovely. Great. You know, these letters, it could be the last letter you read from your husband. And to put this into a song is, um... Oh, God. With the men's return date getting ever closer, the wives' thoughts turned to their husbands. He's been gone 28 weeks tomorrow, so, yeah, that's our, that's our little chart there of, of how long he's been gone. Try again, shall we? I can't wait to have him back. I can't wait to start life again. It's not until you realise that they're on their way home that you realise that actually you've basically been on pause for the last six months, you know. I thought it'd be easier, cos it's not the first time he's been away, but I don't know, maybe the feelings get stronger, or... I, I've just missed him immensely. The blues is the weeks he's been away. Today, Thursday, when he comes back, home will be written right there. In September, following a six-month tour of duty in Afghanistan, 250 Chivana men and women came home, where they were reunited with their loved ones. Families and friends and children and posters and teas and coffees are through there if you want it. Thank you very much. Welcome back. You're now released. <laughs> Oh, 
always good to be on. Especially after a tour that's been this long. Yeah, it's probably the longest, hardest tour I've done. So it's always, uh, always good to get on. Let's take Daddy home. Being able to take your child to say, look, Daddy's home, it's here, it's for you. It, you know your family's going to be complete again and it's, it's just a lovely feeling to think, right, we're all back together, we're all safe and we can just have fun together now. In Plymouth, many of the choir's husbands were still away fighting. To help take the wives' minds off things, Gareth decided they would be the first to hear the new song. I've got here a document that I sent to Paul uh, Mila. Uh, and it's all your letters typed up and he then created a, a poem out of them and out of the sentiments and out of lots of the words and um, in particular that the, the title of it comes from a bracelet that one of the women at Chibna has around her wrist uh, that was given to her by her husband it says wherever you are you are always in my heart and the title of the piece is wherever you are. As soon as I got the song from Paul Mila, I was so excited because it, it was so evidently their song. It was all their words and it was imbued with their, their spirit and I just couldn't wait to share it with them. Wherever you are, my love will keep you safe. I don't know if there's ever been a song quite so personal. That song was our song. Gonna let you take over in a minute. We've got one in tears already. <laughs> Two in tears. I'm so sorry. Listen. The rehearsal where I sang Wherever You Are to Plymouth for the first time was one of the most emotional rehearsals of all because they'd had a very difficult day. There'd been funerals from of soldiers who'd been sent back from Afghanistan. It sounds like it's from everyone's hearts and it just brings everything into perspective. It doesn't matter what you're doing during the day. Someone's loved one is out working in this war when they should be at home with their families and they're not. I mean, immediately, the second they heard it, they loved it, they started to sing it, there was a real enthusiasm. They also knew it was going to be a challenge to sing that song in that context. With the Royal Albert Hall concert just three weeks away, Gareth now had the most challenging task of all, to find someone brilliant enough to perform the solo. The women are coming to audition for the solo for the Royal Albert Hall. This is the officer's mess, because I wanted to, I wanted to come somewhere that was unfamiliar for them, because that's what they're going to have to do at the Royal Albert Hall. This is like the pinnacle of nervousness at the moment. I can't put my hands anywhere because they're shaking so much. Every time they're near me, I'm like, oh! That's a massive gig, massive. I would struggle to, to stand up and sing in front of that number of people. I really would. <sighs> Bring in the troops. Wherever you are, my love will keep you safe. My heart will build a bridge of light across both time and space. Good. Wherever I am. I've forgotten the bloody words. <laughs> <laughs> Seven, eight, nine. I've now heard nine. And no one, no one is ready for the queen. Next! Wherever you are, my heart. Oh, I don't even know the word, sorry. That day of the audition, you know, I don't care what anyone says, it was horrendous. <laughs> just all messed up. <sighs> For Sam, it wasn't just her nerves that made the audition difficult. My mum uh, was recently involved in an accident with a car, and she's now in the high dependency unit. It was very emotional for me. I had these happy thoughts that my husband came home to me and the children safe and sound. And then, you know, my mum is in intensive care. You know, I just can't get my I couldn't get my head around it. And then I'm auditioning for the biggest solo of my life. And I think because of the emotion, I could really put it into the song and really put it into the solo. Sam. Yeah. Take two. Yeah, take two. Fine, all is forgiven. <laughs> it's all fine. Wherever you are, my love will 
keep you safe. My heart will build a bridge of light across both time and space. Good. Sam, look, I mean, my only worry is just, could you handle the pressure? I have my reasons for wanting it. Sorry. It's all right. I want to do it for my mum. Because I know she'd be so proud of me. Yeah. And that's... Look. <sighs> Sorry. That's all right. Look. We have a very important announcement today, and I know you all know and you're all expecting it. This is the announcement of the solo. Um, so I'm not going to beat around the bush too much, but I, I'm going get, to get straight to it. I honestly, hand on heart, didn't think I was going to get it ever in a million years. I would like the soloist to be Sam. Yay. Um, very well done to Sam. I believe you go through things to make you who you are and that is definitely one of those situations that um, not only changes you but makes you as a person. They're here, they're here, this is it. Hi! Hi. Are we excited? Yay. Come on, let's go. This is it! This is the Albert Hall! <laughs> it's quite big, isn't it? <laughs> Ladies, um, what can I say? We're one choir tonight, and it's one choir that speaks to all the military wives in the country. This is it. Enjoy. It's going to be great. Yes? Yeah. Fantastic. <laughs> In, the royal family are in, and as soon as this finishes, it's, it's you, me and the ladies. The nerves, you can hear it going, you hear it as it started, and you're kind of like, <gasps> the butterflies are going now. This is like Christmas morning. <laughs> Christmas morning. Christmas morning. There's only 5,000 people in there. I don't know. And 6 million on television. I'm gonna fall over or something. And I keep forgetting the words. We're ready. Ladies, stand by. <laughs> it all comes down to this. It was extremely frightening. You know, the sort of fear that gets to your toes and works its way upwards. I could barely stand still. Every part of my body was quivering. I was quaking. The adrenaline just hit and it was like euphoria just doing it. I really put my heart into that for, you know, all sorts of reasons. I think that was the pinnacle of me finding my confidence. You know, it, it was a journey all the way through for me. I mean, if you can't say you're confident after that, then there's something wrong with you. Obviously, singing needs emotion. My God, did we have emotion. <laughs> very, very, very proud. And I think um, my husband's were too. It's just, it's unbelievable, yeah. It was only towards the end of the song that I started to look up and think, I'm in the Royal Albert Hall, the Queen is behind me with the whole royal family, the entire military establishment is here, and they are listening to the Military Wives Choir. These women have a voice. They are being heard right now. so well that took real spine and I you know with everything that's going on for you as I well I don't know how you did it. I absolutely loved it. I'm so proud of you all you it was beautiful um very many congratulations. 
Following the Royal Albert Hall, I waved them all off on the coach and I was convinced that that was it, that was the end. And actually that turned out to be the beginning. We got a phone call, not even like a couple of days later, saying, right, ladies, you're coming back to London, you're recording wherever you are as a single. And I think our jaws literally dropped. The single was to be released just before Christmas to raise money for the charities, the Royal British Legion and SAFA, the Soldiers, Sailors, Airmen and Families Association. I think for us, the only way we could do it is if we were raising money for military charities. I think it's the only way you could justify it. It's such a big deal and it's so important. I am so excited. This is brilliant. I have been wanting to do this for so long and, and it's finally happening. It's great. The mood in that studio was just joyous. They thought they were in a rock band. It was hilarious seeing them all with the headphones on, just enjoying being in the studio. Two, three, four. Wherever you are, our hearts still beat as one. I hold you in my dreams each night until your task is done. Actually very good. All day long we've been building up this track bit by bit and then to go into that booth and stand next to the women and hear it so beautifully recorded was wonderful because that's how I wanted it to sound. <laughs> it was the sound that I'd, I'd been trying to draw out of them and oh, it was just electrifying. Everybody was in tears because it, it just sounded beautiful and that's the only way you can describe it, it just sounded so oh, hauntingly beautiful, and to think that that's our voices. It sounded amazing. I didn't stop shaking, I didn't stop crying. I truly did say, my God, we sound like angels. I never thought my wildest dreams we would ever, ever accomplish something like that, and I'm so proud of us. Oh. After the recording of the single, things started to snowball. It went from feeling really small and even singing for the Queen at the Royal Albert Hall, it felt small in some ways and then it exploded at the press launch. Everyone was interested. I mean, every single newspaper, every single news outlet, it was just, it suddenly just seemed to be global. The camera. This is big, yeah, this is fantastic. We never thought we'd ever sing on Plymouth Oak. Never thought in our world of streams we'd go to the Albert Hall. Now there's a record, now we're on the small. It's just, it's lovely, absolutely fantastic. So where, where will this all stop? Uh, don't get excited, but recent development, uh, apparently we are now um, favourites ahead of X Factor. <laughs> It's very, very exciting news. Number one favourite now for Christmas. It's so exciting. I cannot it's believe it. It's insane. It's <laughs> crazy. It. Three, one, two, three. It's all still really surreal. I think it's just like any minute now I'm going to wake up and be back to normal, having my normal life again. It's crazy. Now, just a few months ago, they were simply wives and mothers living on a military base while their husbands were away fighting. Please welcome Gareth Malone and the military wives. <laughs> I mean, it got so big that we went to places that I never dreamed of going. After weeks of media appearances, the choir were invited to perform at a celebration held at number 10 Downing Street in honour of returning servicemen. Follow me. Um, listen, ladies, we are going to work our way through. This is my last chance to talk to you before you go and sing. Oh, how would I even say? We started in we started in Chipper and got to Plymouth, and now look where we are. <laughs> I mean, amazing. So just take a deep breath, get, get strong in the spine, and really and really go for this. Uh, make me proud. Let's go for it. What was so wonderful about standing in number 10 is the significance of the place. It's beyond politics. Hearing the man in that office who is responsible for the country acknowledging these women was of huge significance, no matter what political background you're from. I think we should remember the huge pressure that families are put under with the service life that you've chosen. And the nation owes you a very big thank you for what you do. A big thank you from me, a very warm welcome here to Number 10 Downing Street, and now let's hear from the real talent, the Military Wives Choir. Over to you. There's me, 
men in there and wives who have just literally came back from Libya and have not even seen their own families yet and they're here to see us and it's just it's such a privilege and honour um, for them to be, to be here. Sorry, it's quite emotional, sorry. One man came up to me after the performance and he said, I've been in the military for 15 years, I've never been moved to tears, and I just cried through that performance. It, there was something extraordinary in the air that day. For the first time, they're seeing it on the flip side, and one of, one of the officers said, for the first time, I'm seeing it from my wife's perspective. I've never seen it before. He said, now I've actually feel what she goes through. Mm -hmm. People in the crowd, men, women, in tears, absolutely sobbing, and it just blew me away. I mean, this is the yeah, best thing I've ever done, this, absolutely. It's incredible. I mean, I do, how am I going to top this? Then on Christmas Day, the unthinkable happened. Now, though, this is the moment you've all been waiting for, your Christmas number one, military-wise. Wherever You Are sold over 556,000 copies in its first week. Crazy experience was Christmas Day. We got the Christmas number one, then having champagne and celebrating, photos taken from newspapers, to then, an hour later, being back at home, cooking your Christmas dinner, washing the pots, clearing up, and, and then falling asleep on the sofa like everybody else does on Christmas Day. Following its success in the charts, the single reached another milestone. In October 2012, Wherever You Are was nominated for a classical Brit. With so many fantastic singles to choose from, I'm surprised the judges even managed to choose a shortlist, let alone a winner. When I heard we'd been nominated for a classical Brit, again, it comes down to this, you know, is this, is this really us? You know, you really want to pinch yourself. So let's take a look at this year's nominees. To win, they would have to beat singles from some of the best-known names in the classical world. Other people nominated in the same category. It was like Pavarotti. Cra crazy. This is like world famous. And the military wives. Wherever you yeah. are. It takes a while to sink in. And the winner of the Classic Brits Single of the Year is... And I'm excited about this. Wherever you are, military yeah! wives... Not only had Wherever You Are been a Christmas number one, it was now also an award winner. We were proud of Gareth that night and we were glad he got that award. He was the one that started all this. He was the one that got all these military wives together to sing that song. Thank you very much for this. I, of course, think that this entirely belongs to uh, the wives of, of Chivener and the wives of, of Plymouth and their fine, fine achievement. Long may they continue to sing. For our song to win the classical Brit, that's really special. I'm glad that we could maybe give him something back for what he's given to us. I didn't think that 50 women from Chivena were going to change my life. I thought I knew how this would run, and it has taken me by surprise every single day. After their success, the women of Chivener and Plymouth joined forces with other military wives' choirs to form a charitable foundation that has now helped establish 75 choirs. It gives you great friendships, gives you a great support network, um, and it gives, you, it gives you great happiness through singing. It can be quite a lonely life being an army wife, so to go ahead and join the choir has just given me a whole new lease, to be quite honest it's gone national. There are choirs up and down the country. There's a foundation funded through the charity SAFA, and there are choirs even abroad. It's... I, I'm sort of pinching myself, really. The new choirs also brought in a wave of new voices, which Gareth would involve in future big events. In June this year, Gareth and the Military Wives performed a new song written by Gary Barlow and Andrew Lloyd Webber at the Queen's Diamond Jubilee. It was their biggest event so far. It's like, you know, Christmas Day is going to come early. You know, it's not normal, is it? You're going to sing for the Queen with Gary Barlow in front of millions. 
OK, everybody, for one performance only, the Commonwealth Band is here, and we're going to sing. Sing. Please enjoy. Alongside artists from the Commonwealth, Gareth had brought together 50 women from across the choir network for the performance. Going into any performance, you feel a sense of nerves, you feel a sense of excitement, and it's all kind of mixed up. But for that day, it was a, it was a real sense of responsibility. I had to get it right, and, and it's kind of all resting on me bringing them in at the, the right time. That's really, that's intense. One or two choirs never performed before. Imagine how intense that had, must be for them. There's a place, there's a time in this life when you sing what you are feeling. You have butterflies, of course you do, because you want to, you know, you want to get it right, you want to do it right, you want to nail it, you know, but you just, you've got to do it. There's no turning back. Singing, sing on that stage was very emotional and absolutely had to really pull myself together to not cry on stage because it was overwhelming and the words are beautiful. The Queen is my husband's boss. <laughs> so that's a real proud moment. But to sing for the Queen was amazing and I'll never ever forget the moments. Yeah. 15 million people across the UK watched the choir perform that day. Literally, you could feel in your tummy the resonance of the crowd, from the clapping to the shouting to the singing along. You know, you could just feel this pump, the noise, the clapping. It absolutely unbelievable. You went off that stage but you were on, you were on cloud nine and we wanted to go back and do it again <laughs> but i was like ah, come on let's do it again days before the jubilee gareth had returned to the chapel in chivena where it all began screaming as usual. <laughs> Sounds pretty good, actually. <laughs> Surprise! <laughs> Hello. 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 Hello, I'm John. Oh, hello, John. Nice to meet you. Sorry to interrupt your rehearsal. It's all right, Gareth. Pleasure yeah, to meet you. Yeah. How are they doing? Well, they're OK. They're rising to the challenge. <laughs> it's so good to... I can't believe I'm here. <laughs> How are you? Good. Hi, good, thank you. Missing you. <laughs> yeah, I've missed you as well. <laughs> I, I have brought you uh, a little gift. It's not pizza in that box. <laughs> Why not? It's not wine either, no. <laughs> and no, it's too early for shots. We're not going to, no, we're not going to the party. I honestly cannot believe that I am here, f you know, from those humble beginnings um, of singing, singing in here and getting ready for the pannier market in Barnstable, <laughs> that I am now about, about to present you with a platinum disc. Here it is. Uh, so, presented to the Military Wives Choir Chivener to recognise sales in the United Kingdom of more than 600,000 copies. If I'm absolutely honest, when I first heard it and I listened and I thought, I, I actually wondered if it was too much. I, I don't know, I just I wondered if it would be too much for you or if it would be too kind of, if it would be right. And, and then we had that moment, that first rehearsal when, we, when I first played it to you and you all, well, basically you all cried. <laughs> and then I knew it was right. <laughs> Are you going to sing me a song? There are ladies here come out of the shell, all because of this little man with a pair of glasses that came to visit us. It has completely changed my life. I will thank Gareth to the end of my days for what he's done. He has given me a unity with friends doing something that I love. You can't replace. 
obviously, everywhere that a military wife goes now with her husband, there should be a choir. That didn't exist a year ago, and now it does. We did it for ourselves, we did it for our sanity, and now everybody can have that sanity, everybody can have that sistership, and they've got something to look to when their husbands are away. This was Gareth's dream, and it's, it's, it's came true, and not many people can say their dreams have come true in their life. I don't even think I could express to Gareth how grateful we all are for it, it's just, He's really changed our lives. Bloody hell, I promised myself I wasn't going to cry. <laughs> Well done, thank you. We'd like to say thank you to you as well, Gareth, because for us. <laughs> Stop it! Oh, oh, there we go, there no. we go. There's our wave one. But for okay, us, um, this has been a fantastic ride and a roller coaster for all of us. But the main thing that you've brought to us is the friendship. Hmm. Uh, yeah, we've just had a fantastic time and uh, we've got like loads and loads of like 50 odd lifelong friends that we're never ever going to forget because of you, so thank yeah. you. Group hug! It has been unbelievable this last year. The things that they have achieved have been mind-blowing. There's more to come. There's a bright future and I hope a permanent future for Military Wife Squires. Because none of the hullabaloo and the excitement and the, the media and the photographs really matter. What matters is these women getting into a room when, when the chips are down and their husbands are away and singing and being united by that. bunch of ladies was just crazy because it's still going on and it means so much to them now as well but it was just a lovely... That means a lot to us doesn't it? Yeah. It's quite magical actually. Yeah. It's just the story that's brought everybody together. Just because we were the ones to tell it I suppose. Yeah. yeah. And it, on it goes. <laughs>